Welcome back to the Max Reality. If you've seen my face before, then you know the deal. But if you're new here, I love talking all things reality TV, especially the show Shark Tank. But today, that is not what we're talking about. Today, we're talking about the new show, The Big D. If you haven't heard about it yet, The Big D is USA's newest reality dating show. They're taking six divorced couples, putting them all in a villa, and letting them date each other. That's that's the concept. That's the baseline we're starting from, and it already feels like one of those fake shows on 30 Rock. Another great thing about it, and the reason I even found it in the first place, is because the show is hosted by Bachelorette Jojo Fletcher and her winner, Jordan Rogers. I... It's so fantastic. And JoJo was on this most recent season of The Bachelorette hosting a date. And I thought that was really interesting because USA and ABC aren't like the same network. So I thought it was really like she's doing stuff. She's out there. It wasn't like some cross promotional thing. She was just hosting a group date. And this show is also going on like good for JoJo. I'm glad she's coming back to us. So how does it all work? Let me tell you. Each week, they do some form of exercise, which is usually just sort of some sort of normal reality TV dating show game, and whoever wins that exercise gets to go on a date together. Every single episode, except for the very first one, they're in pairs for these exercises, so they just go on a date with whoever they're paired with. Um, They do get to pick their own pairs, though. Except the first episode, they had to be partnered with their ex, and just the girls got to go on dates. They were, like, the only ones competing. It was, it was a little weird. It was a confusing way to start the show. It's fine, though. It's whatever. <laughs> also, these exercises are run by a mental health counselor. I think that's why they want to call them exercises instead of games, because she's also there on site for anybody to go talk to. There are later episodes where people will make, like, little appointments to go talk to her, either by themselves or as a couple, and so that's a fun little element they have in there. We love Dr. Jada. 10 out of 10 for her. Of course, it wouldn't be a reality dating game show if there wasn't some form of elimination. Each week, the power flips between the men and the women, and say it's the women who get to pick, they pick one of the men to send home. However, if you went on a date that week, then you're safe from elimination. So each week, two different couples win a date. So it it narrows the pool down by a lot, but... (laughs) So while one person gets eliminated every week, we also gain a new person every week. And at first, when this happened, we gained a guy and a girl who are also divorced. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, oh, so these people aren't going to have to deal with their ex watching them date. Oh, no, 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 though, because they brought in their exes later. So which begs the question how and when are we going to just start eliminating people and not be adding anyone? Stay tuned, because I don't know yet either. <laughs> I I have to turn the fan on. It's 10,000. It's it's a thousand degrees. It's a million degrees, and y'all need to see this. I'm sure that's going to sound really weird, but I'm going to pass out from a heat stroke otherwise, so. So the goal of the whole show is for one couple to end up winning and leaving together. Now, this could be two different people from two different relationships who have come together to form a beautiful love, or, spicier, it could be one of the divorced couples getting back together. There are a few who are testing the waters with that, so that, that that's a possibility still. They are few and far between, between the group, but they're there. However, the final couple is not only winning the prize of love, they're also winning a whopping (laughs) $50,000. I'm sorry, I just, I've never been divorced, but I do not think that the the possibility of getting $25,000, because you have to split it, I assume, with the person, I don't think it's $50,000 each, that's not the way it was worded, um, I don't know if $25,000 is enough to make me go be in a villa with my ex-husband, depending on the relationship. Like, I mean, if we were cool, but a lot of these people are not cool. I don't know how they, I just, I don't know. I feel like it'd need to be higher. It'd need to be in the $100,000 range. The 50, if, if I was personally getting $50,000, but $25,000? 
Like, you gotta take off work for that. You might not even win! I just... Oh, I would take more money than that for me. I When they said the prize, I went... <laughs> so if the premise, if the hosts, if none of that was enough to make you say, I'm about to go watch this right now, let's go over the original six couples, because... That helped in getting me hooked in the first episode, so maybe it'll hook you. First up, we have Ariel and Blair. I don't know if I should start with them. Yes, I should, because it'll hook you in for everybody else, because... <laughs> Ariel and Blair were married four and a half years. They have currently been divorced nine months, and from their little intro package, I am like... 45% sure they only dated for about two months before getting married. He might have been being sarcastic... But it really sounded like they'd only been dating two months and then they got married. So Ariel and Blair are a tale as old as time. Ariel was the cool, adventurous, mysterious, manic, pixie dream girl type. And Blair was the scrawny nerd, but he was funny and that's what won her over. Apparently though, in their marriage, Ariel started getting more into social media. She seems to be a TikTok girly from the clips they showed. Um, and according to Blair, that's what broke up their marriage. But... This isn't said in the intro. I don't know if it comes up later in the show or if I just saw this on the internet, but that man cheated. Blair cheated, and that's what broke up their marriage. I mean, I'm not saying a long-distance marriage is great, but people do it without cheating. So, there's that. Ariel is still very much into Blair, but Blair is over it and ready to move on. That's their dynamic. That's our first couple. Next up, we have Jillian and David. These two were high school sweethearts who were married for four years and are now divorced for seven months. The pandemic is really what seemed to break these two up. They both lost their jobs, and that, plus being cooped up at home, just led them to bickering all the time, which led to a divorce. With these two, I don't know, they both act like they're ready to move on, but I feel like there's something still there. I feel like there's a little, there's a little spark there. I, Jillian always puts it as, like, protecting him. Honestly, sometimes he seems more over it than she is, but I don't know. They're a mystery to me. They're, they're their own little thing. Next up, we have Alexis and Devin, who have actually been divorced longer than they were married. They were married for a year, and they've been divorced for two. And this is the couple that's trying to rekindle their little flame, and I'm rooting for them. That's pretty much all we get about who they are in the first episode. You'll get more if you watch it. But their big thing is they're just trying to work on their actual relationship. And I love it for them. I'm rooting for them. Next up, we have Casey and Brooks. They were married for two years and divorced for six months. This is another one that we don't get like a whole bunch of their backstory. But what we do get is that Brooks is still very, very much in love with Casey. And Casey is over it. She is ready to try to Find him a girl, any girl, a beautiful girl. She just wants him to get laid and to move on. And that man is not ready. Up next, we have Allie and Mims. They were married for five years. Their bio on USA.com says they were married for five years. But in the first episode, Mims says they're married for four. And Allie corrects him saying six. So I don't know if USA just split the difference or what's up with that, but we'll go with five. We'll also split the difference. They were married five years and on the show they'd been divorced six months. As Allie puts it, they got married on not the most solid foundation. It sounds like she got pregnant and they felt like they had to get married. And so they did. And eventually Allie ended up cheating on Mims and they got divorced. My main thing with this couple is I feel like they both got eliminated too soon. I wanted to see more from both of them, and I'm not going to say when everybody got eliminated, but it was too soon. Too soon. And our very last couple is Dee Dee and Takor. They were married a year and a half, and on the show they've been divorced 10 months. Takor still very much wants to be with Dee Dee, and Dee Dee has moved on, which good for her, because Takor seems... like a lot. Again, the people we get the most backstory for were those first two couples, Jillian and David and Ariel and Blair. The rest of them we kind of get throughout the other episodes, but I don't want to spoil everything because I want y'all to go watch it. I need more people to watch this show. We're only six episodes in. Again, I don't know how many they're going to do because they haven't been very clear on 
when we're going to get to the final couple, but you need to go check it out. I watch it on Peacock. I'm sure there's other ways to watch it. I don't know them because I don't watch them that way, but I have been having so much fun and I have to get more people into it. That's the whole reason I did this video is hoping I can at least drag one more person into watching this ridiculous reality show with me. And that's all I got for this one. If you're watching The Big D, please leave all your thoughts and feelings in the comments. I've been dying to talk to anybody about the show, but I don't know a singular soul except myself who's watching it. If you haven't watched it yet, did this make you want to watch it? Did it make you never want to see it? Put it all down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next one.